Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Thanks for joining me on this Wednesday, January 4th, 2023 in the Locker Room. I'm Alan Locker. Welcome to the first show of the new year with actor Bradley Cole, who is joining us to look back at his time on Guiding Light, his role as dad to Sean and Maya, and fill us in on what's ahead in 2023. As you all know, Bradley first joined the cast of Guiding Light back in July of 1999 as the charismatic Prince Richard Winslow. He left that role in 2002, and to the fans' delight, he returned to Guiding Light in May of 2003, taking on the new role of District Attorney Jeffrey O'Neill. Bradley is an accomplished musician and songwriter. He has released five albums, Tonight, All Your Dreams, In Our Time, and most recently, Live Tracks, and A Human Things. Songs off his album also were featured on Guiding Light. He is going out on the road in 2023, and he will tell us all about that. Please help me welcome Bradley Cole to the locker room. Bradley, Happy New Hello. Year, my friend. Happy New Year, Alan. So good to see you. Oh, my God. So it's been good to forever. It has, it has <laughs> been forever. Uh, Nicole Forrester sent me a message to say hello to you. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, my gosh. Uh, hello, Nicole. And such um, great memories uh, with her going through the war out in uh, New Jersey. <laughs> uh, the war in New Jersey in PPAC. Yes, in yes. PPAC, which isn't too far from where I am. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, out that, in New Jersey. That's so now. funny. Um, are you someone who makes New Year's resolutions? Not really. Uh I'm just sort of, I'm sorry, I got like Frank Sinatra in my ear. Is that on my end or is that on your it, end? I think that's on your end. <laughs> <laughs> Let me kill the Frank Sinatra if I can. I there love it. Go. I love uh, it. There we go. Frank, be quiet. I was just about to compliment you on your choice of music, but that's actually me. My, my <laughs> mother would be very pleased. If yeah, Fly Me to the Moon was playing. I'm thinking, oh, this is great. Oh, she would have been very pleased if I was playing Frank. Oh, New Year's resolution. Yeah, she yeah. likes Frank. Oh, she loved. Oh, yeah, he, he was. He was. You know, her idol growing up. That's right, New Jersey, New yeah. Jersey boy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, New Year's resolutions has never really been my thing. Um, you know, I kind of set goals for myself, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't really, you know you know, set anything like, oh, you know, you're going to lose some weight or you're going to do this. You're going to go to the gym. Uh, uh, that's just setting myself up for failure. But I yeah. do try to set goals for the year. A lot of pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have a lot on your plate for 2023 and are headed out on tour with French musician Elsa Esno. 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 Yeah. You don't pronounce the T at the end. Elsa. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, I, you, I don't know. Sorry. What can you tell us about the tour? Well, it's not really a tour. We're just doing, you know, she's a big uh, star in France. And uh, she is currently on tour over there. She's, you know, she, she does big, um, big venues and, you know, three, 5,000 people sometimes. So she's never played in America before. We recorded together in Nashville this summer. And uh, I had the occasion to go over to France and perform with her uh, on stage over there in Paris. Uh, and so they are going, uh, she is going to come to America and she'll be in Nashville uh, performing uh, uh, on the, let me get the dates right, the 16th, uh, the 16th in Nashville at a place called The Wash. And of January? Uh, I'm sorry, of February. February. February 16th. And then in New York City at the Soho Playhouse uh, on February 18th. And I am the opening act. They've uh, They've asked me to be the, the opening act for her and so uh, february yeah. what in new york february 18th and oh, you know i'm going to text my brother who uh is helping me uh with that venue and see if the tickets are yet up for sale okay uh, yeah talking. i gotta see if i can but make that i would love to see you that would they're be supposed amazing. To, they're supposed to be up on sale so uh go to the soho playhouse.com the Great. soho playhouse.com and um, they'll be up for sale. And this is to benefit, once again, the Red Cross. Now, you probably remember, Alan, yeah. to do the Red Cross uh, uh, benefits. And this is going to be another one of those. Oh, that's awesome. What, was there, um, did you have a connection to the Red Cross? Because I, I, I know that all the shows we did back then. Yeah. 
Well, my only connection was that I always, uh, you know, uh, you know, I grew up uh, with the Red Cross was uh, was front and center as a charity for for us, and you know, the blood uh, donations and so on and so forth. And I just admired what they did in New York City, particularly. A lot of people don't know that they're uh, they respond to they're the first responders oh, normally yeah. uh, for people who are for for example there's so many fires in New York did you know that there's like a fire almost every day in New York at least one and so they're there to provide uh, a lot of uh, services and and meals and and shelter for people who uh, who are you know have the bad luck of being in, involved in something like that. Yeah, I, I had a friend who worked there for the last couple of years. Don't think he's there anymore, but because I followed him on social media, I would see like he would be whatever, you know, sad event he would, you know. Yeah, I mean, I was one. amazed. They have a, a uh, they have a headquarters on Well, they just moved it. They moved it when I was there a long time ago, actually. So I think they're on 39th Street. Uh, anyway, they, they I did a, a ride along with with them once, and they showed me their headquarters. And you can't believe the facility that they have, and and the uh, the operations they have uh, over there. They're 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 listening to all of the, the the actual first responders, the fire department, and the police department, and they're responding as they hear this stuff. So it's really pretty impressive. Wow, Edith is is writing in in French. She said uh, something about Nashville on the 16th of February and New York on the oh, 18th. <laughs> I can't, I can't see any of that. So you probably, you don't speak French or read French, right? I, I don't. <laughs> well, I have alerted, just so you know, I've alerted everybody in France that is. Oh, uh, okay, uh, good. Because yeah, yeah, somebody's definitely watching and they're, I love it. I love well, it. If you well, can attempt to read it, I could probably understand. Yeah, I think she's just repeating what you said of the dates in uh, Nashville and New York City. Uh, okay, so that's um, February 18th in New York. That's the one that uh, that's the big one for me because I'm kind of helping to produce that one. And then also in Nashville, February 16th. When was the last time you performed in New York City? Oh, God, it had to have been during the guiding light days wow. so it's been a long time since i performed in public in general <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah so it has to have been that. you know i haven't even been to new york in ages i don't even know the last time i was there and i miss it so much wow. uh, and my brother lives there and he's works in theater there so it's going to be a great uh, opportunity for me to get back there in february i love that will you bring the kids uh, they got school, so I'm school. not sure. I'm not yeah. sure we can swing that. Uh, I would really like to bring well, both of them, of course. Uh, but Maya is uh, heavily into music, uh, and I didn't force her or push her. <laughs> uh, she really is very musical, and you can see the piano behind me. That's that's her music. Not oh, her. I love it! I was going to um, ask you if if you could see if either one of them were following in Dad's footsteps. Well, uh, I'm delighted because she, and she's much more accomplished than I am or, or was anyway at that age. Uh, she's 13 now and she is in the school orchestra and, uh, you know, her, she started on the piano and she's primarily a, a pianist, but she played the flute and she plays, well, a year ago, they don't have a piano in the orchestra at the school she goes to. And they said, well, what do you want to do? And she picked up a violin. That was about a year and a half ago. And now she's one of the first violins uh, in the orchestra in a year oh, and a half. Wow. So, yeah, she's very, I'm, well, I'm, I'm one talking day, about uh, Papa, right? <laughs> I was just going to say one day father and daughter on stage. Together. Oh, I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> she doesn't want anything to do with me. Uh, yeah, well, that, yeah, that's a typical teenager. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was well, going to say, I would we love are to getting a lot of love from France. There are a lot of people. There you go. Them. Bonjour yeah. tout le monde. Bonsoir. Il est mis là bas maintenant. Bonsoir Perfect. et uh, merci d'être venu. Uh, I, I love it. Um, besides um, touring with Elsa or going, you know, performing, you also play her father in a. Uh, Parisian soap, correct? That is correct. Uh, so that's a that's a long story, but let me. I'll just try to <laughs> make it brief. Um, so I was on a TV show there, Alan, and I don't even want to say how many years ago, but it was <laughs> at least three decades ago. Wow. And uh, and it happened to be uh, a surprise hit. Uh, it was it was um, a sitcom. And, but we shot it like a soap opera. We shot an episode a day. 
and um, it was called Les Filles d'à Côté, The Girls Next Door. And there were three girls uh, uh, who were divorcees, and there were two guys next door. The one of the guys, the, the comedic one, was always trying to get with the girls, and the girls were always trying to get with the, the American photographer, which was It sounds almost me. like Free's Company. It, it was exactly, it was, it, was, it was kind of like that, exactly. And lo and behold, it was like a, a big hit. We had a huge audience, and, um, and uh, that was a fantastic experience for me, obviously. And uh, so the producer of that show about, I wanna say a couple of years ago, two years ago now, I had been uh, sort of in rec reclusion and in retirement. He called me out of the blue because they wanted to reboot that with a new, you know, a new version of it all these years later. And he asked me if I would wanna participate. And I told him that nah, I was retired and, but I don't know, somehow that, that was in my brain but out of my mouth, I said, yes, why not? <laughs> uh, so because I thought, well, yeah, why not? Let's revisit that. That'll be fun. And to see everybody again. And, what made you sort of think you were in retirement? Well, you know, I, I really made a definite decision to, to step away from, from entertainment. And because I had at the time, two very, very young, I mean, I had a baby really, and, and Sean was only three or so. And um, I just decided I didn't want to be absent. And that <clears throat> if I was gonna continue in my field because Guide and Light had ended, and I was gonna be going from job to job and maybe flying to France or maybe flying to England or whatever. And I just thought, no, I don't wanna do that. I wanna be with the kids. And, uh, and, and be there for them. So that was a, sort of the decision I made at the time. But anyway, let me finish the story about, so the, 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 the producer, Jean-Luc Azoulay, who's a very uh, uh, illustrious producer uh, with a huge resume in France. Uh, he called me and I agreed to do this, but it didn't work out. The, the show didn't get the funding or something didn't happen. And, and so we didn't do it. And I don't know if he felt sorry for me or whatever, but uh, he already had this one show up called Les Mystères d'Amour, which means the mysteries of love. It's a French soap opera. Uh, I think it's titled um, Love in Paris here. Uh, and uh, he asked me if I would want to come out to St. Martin, which is where they were shooting, uh, and do a few episodes and sing a song or write a song for the show uh, and for the uh, for the protagonist, uh, her name is Elsa, as Noel, who we talked about, and and so that was hard to pass up. Uh, 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 so that's how I got involved with this new show. I, I love that. Well, yeah. I'm glad you didn't give it up. I'm glad they convinced you to come back. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, so that led to other things. So they liked the song I wrote. Uh, and it's sort of a song, um, a father daughter song, the the daughter is uh, is having struggles in her love life, and and um, they he's lost his wife, and she's lost her mother mysteriously, uh, and uh, so he he sings a song with her, telling her it's okay, I got problems too, uh, it's going to be all right, and so that's what the song is, and that's going to be on her next album, I believe. I hope I'm not speaking out of turn but i think that'll be we recorded that and it's already finished so that'll be on the next album i think that's awesome where did your love of music start well uh you know it's funny you ask that because before i was gonna do this with you today i was started thinking about well what's alan going to be asking me <laughs> you're asking me that and i and i remember a guitar I remember a guitar when I was eight years old. I was, we were living in the valley in, in Los Angeles and Woodland Hills. And so this is, this is many years ago. This is <laughs> yesterday. This is, this is the sixties. Okay. <laughs> so I was eight years old and uh, I remember the guitar and I, and I, I called my mom just last week and I said, mom, where did you get that guitar? Where did that guitar come from? Because uh, I remembered my older brother, Jeff, was originally supposed to be taking these guitar lessons. And I said, what do you mean Jeff's taking the guitar lessons? I want to take guitar lessons too. So I went to the guitar lesson and I picked up that guitar and I never let it go. And, um, and that's how I got started. And this was in the 60s and we had so much just amazing 
music happening. And I, I just was so affected by it. I remember all the albums of my, of my parents, um, you know, everything from, you know, Trini Lopez, Frank Sinatra to um, uh, all the, uh, all the great stuff that they were listening to. And then all the stuff that was coming out, all the stuff from the sixties and the Beatles, of course, and, and, and all of the stuff that was happening at that time. And I was just, you know, hooked. I mean, music was everything to me. So that's how I got started in music. And I didn't really uh, pursue it avidly until I was a teenager. So I must've been 13 or 14. That's when I was, I was, I can't say enough about the Beatles. I mean, the Beatles are everybody's influence, right? But I learned every Beatles song on the guitar. And I think I can wow. still play most of them. <laughs> wow, uh, that's incredible. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I was a Beatle fan fanatic and then I learned a lot of the other stuff. And, and, and then I, you know, when we joined bands and so we, we were in bands and, uh, uh, and then in high school, I remember I played my first paying gig which was in a bar because I was I was 18. And I wasn't even supposed to be in there, but we, we, we got hired to play in this bar. And so we, we went in there. And so that was my first paying gig. And it just it took off from there. And, and was acting on your radar at a young age as well? Uh, no, no. Acting came along uh, much later. We talked about my brother, Darren, already, who is in the theater in New York City. He produces. Um, he was the actor in the family. And it wasn't until well, I don't college. Think I that. Wow! I... Yeah, yeah. Well, he runs the Soho Playhouse, and um, which is one of the reasons why we're using that venue. And he's been the artistic director there for a number of years, and uh, he's got quite an amazing resume. He travels the world now, searching for plays and uh, for off-Broadway shows, and he brings them over to that theater. And they have something called the Encore series there, and uh, it's quite popular. Uh, so, but acting. That happened in college. So I was at Pepperdine University and uh, I was primarily there to play baseball. I managed to make the baseball team, which was, you know, a pretty phenomenal team in, in the 19, late 70s. They had a fantastic team. So I was very fortunate to be a part of that. And uh, I hurt my arm. I was a pitcher. So a, a pitcher with a hurt arm isn't worth very much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, had, I remember there was another... Uh, friend of mine on the team and uh, he was injured too. And we happened to be walking back to our dorms one day and we saw a poster uh, for the school production for, uh, you know, the, the theater department's production that year was, was going to be one flew over the cuckoo's nest. And I had my eye on this, uh, on a couple of the actresses over there. <laughs> one in particular. And, uh, and we just thought this will be great fun. We can go, you know, in one flew over the cuckoo's nest, there's all these uh, extras that they would need to hire to play the, the, the cuckoos, the crazies. And we thought, well, we'll just go uh, have fun and, and act like crazy guys and, and, and get a chance to talk to some of the actresses over there. <laughs> and uh, so we went and long story short, the, uh, the director there, who's really, I guess, responsible for my acting career, her name was Eileen Daniel, and um, she saw something in me. She uh, asked me to come back. Uh, I remember being on the on the baseball field, and Laura Kennedy, who ended up becoming a great casting director over at Warner Brothers, uh, was part of the theater department. She she came down and she said, "What are you doing on the baseball field?" I said, "What do you mean?" I said, "Well, you you're on the callback sheet." I said, "What's a callback sheet?" <laughs> and she says, "Never mind, just get in the car. We're going now." So I got in the car and went up there and then she had me, the director had me read scenes uh, from the play. And this was pretty daring of her because we're talking about a, uh, an expensive school uh, and the theater department where people are there on scholarship, you know, and the, the lead role in the production is a very, was a very coveted to say the least. And so she would really was going out on a limb. And I remember, on the final callback, she had me come into her office. And there's one part in that play where the R.P. McMurphy, who's the, uh, the Jack Nicholson character in the movie, has to try to pick up this breaker box, this giant box. And, and uh, he's telling all, the, all, all of his 
uh, companions there that he's going to do this and he can't do it. And he's, and he's, he, he gives it all of it, all, everything he has. And he, and he, he breaks down emotionally. And so she had me do that for her in her office, uh, to see, you know, if she was going to, if I was going to be able to do this part. And I somehow managed to convince her that I could do that. So, um, I ended up getting the part and I ended up, we had a great production and ended up getting the award for the best actor, which really pissed people off. Yeah, sure <laughs> did. And I, got I, I, I did read that. That's incredible. Yeah. And, and, you know, doing this show and talking to actors for the last three years about their star, so many the same way of just going out because the girls are on the, you know, <laughs> yeah. audition, you know, it, it's wild that, you know, you guys have fallen in love with this craft, but we're doing it not necessarily for, for the craft. Yeah, to begin well, with. we mentioned the Beatles earlier. I think John Lennon famously said, we were just trying to get the girls. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I guess that's a common uh, thread yeah. there. Yeah. That's incredible. And how did you learn French? Did you learn it uh, here in the States or when you finally- No, once again, that's a sort of a uh, product of uh, necessity. Um, I had studied or tried to study Spanish, I mean, from junior high school. So mm -hmm. like everybody in, in California. It's a little easier, or I think so, at least. I, I, you know what? I, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. But uh, I, I wasn't very good at Spanish, that's for sure. It was one of my weaker subjects. And uh, no, it wasn't until I was um, in France and decided to stay there. And that's a whole another long story. I don't know if we have time to tell it. But yeah. Uh, uh, that's when I, uh, learned French because I wanted to work, uh, I wanted to work in France. Wow. Do you, have you taught it to your children? Uh, you know, uh, they are taking, uh, uh, I think they're taking Spanish. Yeah. They're taking Spanish. So uh, I'm trying to convince them to take French. Hey, let, let them take Spanish. Uh, Alan, I tell you, they want nothing to do with me. So, you know. <laughs> It's, it's very <laughs> sad. It really is. Yeah. They did, you know, before the teenage years they did, and then it just changes, right? Yeah. You're, you're the hero, and all of a sudden you're the zero. You know? <laughs> yeah. You're the zero. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, talk about the first, you know, get going over to France the first time. Well, that's another great story. Um, I, you know, I, I, so there I was with my Best Actor Award. So I just thought, hmm, I'll just walk into Hollywood and accept my roles now, and my parts. Of course, that's, I was in for a rude awakening, <clears throat> even though I had a lot of great inroads because of the situation at Pepperdine and the Malibu colony is there. So there were a lot of the, uh, the people who actually voted for the Best Actor Award were people that worked in the industry. But it was very hard. And I remember being in a bookstore in Malibu and speaking to one of the, uh, a producer and uh, he, he said, well, you know, it's very arrogant of you. Uh, you know, you, what are you bringing to the table? Because there's you and there's a, a 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 other guys with their best actor awards in Hollywood. And so what do you have to bring to the table? And he asked me if I had ever traveled. And I said, no, I'd never traveled. And, I, and I, that sort of planted the seed. And uh, a while later, I decided, you know what, I'm going to uh, travel. So I bought this Greyhound bus ticket. And at the time you could buy this ticket and it wasn't too expensive. And as long as you kept going east, you could use it as many times as you want, as you wanted. So um, I decided to do that. My brother had already gone to New York. So I, my idea was I was gonna travel the States and, and end up with my brother in New York, visit him. And then from there go to Europe and you know, back then, after you graduated from college, backpacking around Europe was the big thing that everyone wanted to do. Yeah. And so I thought I would do that. And so I traveled across. Oh, this is this is a funny story. So I saved up. I managed to save up about two thousand dollars, which was a lot of money back back then. This was the early 80s. And so I get on the bus. So I, I go to Reno, Nevada is my first stop get off at Reno and I decide that I can play blackjack and uh, make some more money. <laughs> I lose almost the entire uh, amount. 
And I'm thinking, oh my God, oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to crawl back home to my father and my family and in just humiliated and in shame. I can't do it. What am I going to do? Uh, I, you're going to think this is really crazy. And I was crazy. I, I had met someone there. We were having a drink at a bar and we were sort of challenging each other. And uh, he bet me. Uh, I don't know, it was a couple hundred bucks about that I wouldn't shave my head. Yeah, and I said, okay, you're on. This is how scared I was of going home. I actually cut off all my hair and shaved my head and he gave me $200. Oh, I immediately, I know, I, I, it's, that's well, how crazy you were, I was. You were afraid to, to say you lost your money. And so then I first bought, invested in a hat, <laughs> went back to the casino, haven't learned my lesson, and I went it all back. I, I, I've got like my 2000 plus. And I remember there was a guy and now I'm heading to the bus station and there was a, a, a gentleman who was, I, I believe he was in the military. And I said, listen, here's $20. Do not let me out of this bus station and, and until I get on that bus. And he said, okay, you got it. And, and so he, I got onto that bus and I continued my journey. Long story short, I go, oh, you know, I have so many stories to tell about going across the States. End up in New York, see my brother and then get off go off to paris and then i have a whole uh traveling around uh europe uh, visiting almost all the countries there uh, playing guitar there i had bought a guitar and was playing guitar in bars and in streets and doing whatever i could to survive and i saw a play in paris it was an american uh, or i should say an english production a production in english and it was one uh it was a view from the bridge I thought, oh my gosh, this is this is amazing. These people are doing what I dreamed of doing, which was acting in Paris, France, in this cute little theater called La Galerie 55, the Galerie 55. <clears throat> I come back to Paris after traveling around a bit, and uh, they're doing another show there, and it was Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? And I found out through the grapevine that the actor that was playing Nick, it's a four-hander, there's basically four people in the play, was leaving and they were looking for someone to, pl to play Nick. And uh, I, I auditioned for it and, and I got the part uh, to play Nick in Paris, in this little theater, and that sort of started my career in France. I mean, an incredible journey. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. seriously. Well, you, you say that Glenn Daniels found you for Guiding Light. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Glenn, you know, without Glenn, uh, then, then I would never have been in that show. That's how, for sure. How did he find you? Well, I had been uh, doing a play. This is obviously many years later now. And I was on stage with Jean-Paul Belmondo. So I, I know a lot of Americans aren't familiar with him, but they should be. He's one of the greatest actors of all time and a huge, huge, he's part of French culture. He's just a huge, huge uh, uh, figure in, in French cinema and uh, in the theater. Anyway, he was doing his big play in, in France. I got managed, managed to be cast as the Duke of York and I had my scenes. There I was with Jean Paul on stage alone in front of literally all of Paris in this huge theater. I still to this day don't know how I got through the through it, but um, I they were finishing the they were wrapping that production in Paris and then I had gone back to visit in California yeah. and I had an agent there and while I was there she said well while you're here just you know go see some people and I did and one of them they were casting mm -hmm. for Guiding Light Prince Richard and it was Glenn Daniels he was out in Los Angeles uh, looking for Prince Richard oh no actually actually I was. I was read for Prince Edmund. Oh, I was gonna, wow. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna play the, the, uh, the, I was reading for Prince Edmund. Of course, Glenn immediately had me read for Richard. And he must have seen something in me. And so uh, uh, they, I guess whoever, the powers that be saw the, saw the audition tape and uh, they said, listen, you gotta, you, we wanna, uh, you to audition in New York. And I said, okay. So they flew me out to New York. And uh, I, I remember auditioning with Kim. 
and I believe it was Glenn and Kim, Kim particularly, that really fought for me. Uh, but I, I heard that the network wanted, did not want me. And so Kim was, was really fighting for me. And uh, we had such a great audition. We just felt, you know, really, you know, something there. And um, you and but, Princess Catherine. <laughs> yes, yes. I oh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, I had um, astutely uh, a little while before then uh, paid a lot of money to a director uh, in Los Angeles to put together a reel for me. And back then you had, you know, an audition tape and it was like literally a VHS tape. <laughs> yeah. And uh and I spent a lot of money. My brother said, you're crazy. I, I, I spent thousands of dollars. And I, I just, you know, I said, well, I've got to do this. So that was the best investment I made because I found out later that it was when the network saw that tape that we had put together. And I had all the stuff from Paris and, and it made me look like this, you know, great uh, European star. Uh, and that the, the network finally signed off on it. You know? I love I love that Kim fought for you because... Kim tells a story that she didn't want Tom Pelfrey. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, well, really? I didn't know that. She didn't want Tom. Well, there, well see, she got, she got one wrong. She got right? one of those right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's Tom, wild. Oh, my gosh. Tom, what a, what a, what a force. What a force. What a force, yeah. huh? Yeah. But fun to see what he's done, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I watched his stuff on uh, Ozark, and it just blew the doors <laughs> off. It was incredible and so painful to watch, and so uh, wonderful to watch at the same time. Yeah, yeah what a it, great, it, great performance! He's actually expecting a baby. Is he really? He oh is. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess so. Huh? It's about time. We're all. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's no spring chicken anymore. No, he's not, not a young. Not, not any. Not boy any wonder boy. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you remember your first day at Guiding Light at all? Uh gosh, yeah. I mean, it was basically the scene that we uh, uh, that I auditioned. Oh, and okay. I remember. I still remember the first line. Stop right there. Was my <laughs> first line, and. Uh, and so I do remember, and uh, I, I, I should have been a lot more, I guess, nervous and concerned than I was. But after having done the show in France, where it was all in French, and we, like I said, it was a, it was a, there was basically five of us, so we were always on all the time, and it was shot as a daily. And so I said, if I could handle this. In French, I can handle anything. And, I, and so that sort of really prepared me for the guiding light, the rigors of guiding light. And, um, but yeah, so Kim was just so helpful and great. You know, well, she's you, just, yeah. Your, your first two leading ladies there were Crystal Chappelle and Kim Zimmer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> they told me, I didn't know who Kim Zimmer was. How could I? I was not really part of the, you know, over here. Uh, and they said, well, she's won five Emmys. I'm thinking, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, and then Crystal, what, a, what an amazing, uh, attractive, beautiful, talented, uh, you know, so much depth to what she was doing. So yeah, those are my 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 two uh, uh, my introduction. Yeah, I mean your your introduction to to San Cristobal and Springfield. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not bad, right? No, re yeah. really not, not not at all. And and then they paired you with Laura Wright. Yes, with Laura Wright, and I I do remember, uh, I remember seeing her uh, in the hallway. I'm just I'm having a flashback now. <laughs> she was in the hallway, and I remember seeing her and and thinking, okay, she's she's somebody. I can tell she had that that uh, you know je ne sais quoi. She had that spark that you know you couldn't take your eyes off of her, and uh, that something that you can't learn or or, or develop. She just had it, and um, uh, so yes, being paired with with Laura was just. I mean that's that's a whole that's the whole beginning of the love stories, which uh, which was so fantastic. It really and, was. And the other and love you story. Said, you said you had a <clears throat> story about this horse. Oh yes. Okay. So, 
So there we are. Uh, in Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico. And this is actually uh, Cassie, Laura's character, is having, I believe, this a dream about this prince, you know. I got a couple of funny stories here. But at this horse, so Paul Rouch was our director, and he imagined... Executive producer. Uh, I'm sorry. Our, did I say director? Um, our yeah. executive producer, of course. And he... Uh, there he was with his guitar on the beach. Uh, uh, okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to get on this horse and you're going to sweep the princess up, put her on the back of the horse and gallop off. I was thinking, okay, you're crazy. Uh, luckily, I had trained uh, in horse riding. So I, uh, at one time, I actually wanted, I had the crazy idea that I was going to play polo. And um, so I could, ride the, I could ride a horse, but I get to the beach and this horse is completely out of control and spooked. It, apparently it had never been near water before, near the ocean. So there's this horse and it's completely uh, freaked out. Uh, but, you know, right. here I, I am. Don't remember, new... I don't remember that, but- that Oh was... yeah, yeah. So, well, Laura will tell you, cause she said, there is no way I'm getting on that horse. <laughs> and I said, come on, Laura. You... No, 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 no. And so I, you know, get on the horse. So I, I managed to, to, to get it somewhat under control. But sure enough, as I, as I gallop off I, uh, at the end of the scene, you, I think if you watch it closely, if, I don't know if the scene's out there anywhere, but oh, you I'm can sure see it, it bucks. It, it's bu and I'm, I'm doing all I can to stay on the darn thing. So uh, that's the story about that horse. And it, that was a great funny. remote. Well, that wasn't the most terrifying part of the beach scene, actually. Uh, the most terrifying part was, uh, see, in Cassie's dream, the prince uh, strides out of the water where he's been bathing in the, in the ocean, and he, he comes up to her, and he swoops her off her feet and, and gives her a passionate kiss. And so the uh, Sean Dudley, the casting, uh, the, uh, the costume, costume designer. director, designer, uh, came up to me with these little tiny like <laughs> bikini uh, pants. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> no, please, no, Sean, don't do this to me. <laughs> and I was like, what's the problem? What's the problem? Uh, <laughs> thankfully, we, we ended up using a lengthier short, uh, but they, that, was, that terrified me. Oh, so that, I was gonna that, have to get into those things. That's funny. That is, but seriously, you know, you, Laura, I mean, one of the fans said you had chemistry with all Kim, Laura, Nicole, Crystal. Well, that's a tribute to them. I mean, I mean, if you can't have chemistry with the likes of those actresses, uh, you're in trouble. I mean, they were just so, you know, there's just, that's what, why they're successful. They're, they're, they're not only uh, skilled at, at the craft, but, you know, they have that that can, they're able to connect. Uh, and that's what really is important. Mm. And, and the audience sees that, you know, if you have a connection, it's in your eyes, it's in the way you move. And uh, that, that's really, I, I love how you, you say that because it is so interesting because it is why they, they work with every, you know, there is a, um, people fall in love with whoever they are with. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you, you know, those and, couples, and, work and and that's i mean and in in love in the spiritual sense uh and uh you know and i think that the the two brothers david andrew mcdonald uh, there was there was a great love there and i think that that was contributed immensely to the success of that storyline and the tension and the love between the two brothers uh, and, and David was just uh, so great to work with. He, was, he brought it. He brought yeah, it every day. Did. And so and so was I. And uh, so we were bringing it, and I think people could sense that. Oh, pe people, absolutely. Edmund yeah. and Richard were yeah. a it was, pair. It was right, so they funny. were a pair in their own right. Well, and David is, is, you know, is a comedian, too. He's funny, and we would just have such a great time. And, of course, we we're both with our... <laughs> Uh, trying to outdo our, you know, uh, queen mother accents. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, so that was just so much. Well, I, I'll fun. never forget him driving his golf cart in. 
Oh, Puerto Rico. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he drove it. Well, I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah, I'm not he gonna drove bust it off. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'll let him tell that story. <laughs> he definitely dro drove it off. But again, you know, you had the women, and then you had, you know, David and Robert Newman and Tom Pelfrey as your son. Oh you yeah, know. I mean, and Robert was another one. Uh, just. Uh, such a great guy and so, uh, you know, great to work with uh, and so professional. And I remember, I don't know how many years he had been on the show when I first came on. I remember being in the elevator with him over at the studio and I was just I'm so like, so how long have you been on the on the show? And he, he mentioned some ungodly number of years. <laughs> we, we just both started laughing because uh, he didn't have a, a big head and nobody really did at Mm -hmm. at guiding light and well no one would let you get away with it uh so uh they were very so warm to me and so nice and um really ha have you kept that. in touch with david at all no no you know that's the thing about these shows and in show business you know i've been a part of so many productions uh and guiding light happened to have been probably the longest one i was ever a part of but it's you know, you're, you're so close. You're so, you, you, you're, you're not, it's people say you're a family. It's, it's actually more than a family. It, you're just, you're going through a war together. You're doing so much together. You're, you, you're, it's a team uh, thing. And, um, and then the show ends and then you go off to your next show and your next production and your next family. And, and so it's, it's kind of hard to, to maintain those those same relationships, I don't know. It's a very strange thing about our our business. But yeah. but if you saw him tomorrow, you'd pick up as if you saw him yesterday. It's funny you say that because <laughs> here I was uh, um, in October, uh, and I it was like an out of body surreal experience. I'm shooting a scene in this in this um, uh, Les Mystères d'Amour, which is the, the soap I'm in over there, and. I'm standing in front of these people, these these people that I, some of them I were very, very, very close with. And I, it's been 30 years and here I am. And there's like five of them in front of me. And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm doing a scene and with these people. And it's like yesterday, but it was 30 freaking <laughs> years ago. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, and it is, it is like yesterday uh, I met one of the actors uh, we had dinner together and we were talking to each other literally like it was yesterday. And so that's, yeah, it's yeah, bizarre. It's, it's an incredible connection. Um, when Richard died, did you, I can't remember, did you know Jeffrey was going to come back? No, no, not at all. Uh, I, you know, and I'm, I'm normally on very good behavior uh, but I, I think towards the end of the Richard thing, I, I knew it was time to kind of move on and, and I, I, they kind of, you the know, Prince wore you out. <laughs> well, it's, you know, uh, and, and I think the fans too had had enough. And, um, so it was, it was, a, it was a good opportunity for, uh, for a great, uh, exit, you know, yeah. when, when your character dies. And besides, as you're nobody in soap opera until you die and come back from the dead, right? He's like, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so Absolutely. I, I didn't With mind. The exact same face. <laughs> but it, it was, but it was really great chance for, particularly for Laura to, to really uh, uh, come into her own and 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 have some really impactful emotional scenes, and. Um, yeah, but to answer your question, I did not know. Uh, and then there was a changing of the guard and they called me and they asked me if I was interested in doing this other part. And uh, I said, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am. So that's how that happened. Uh, I was not aware of it, uh, uh, no, beforehand. Was that John Conboy? I believe it was Conboy who was... Uh, who was the producer? Yeah, and because uh, Ellen, Ellen came Weston. after Convoy, Ellen Weston yeah, this was, was the, was the writer. writer. Yes, and uh, she really uh, wrote some great stuff and created this great character that was a foil to Edmund and Cassie, and it was just so much fun to play. 
uh, I think I drove some people crazy, but uh, <laughs> I won't mention names, but uh, I just, it was so delicious to play the exact opposite of, of the previous character. So that was a, just a blast to play. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the fans were thrilled. Yeah. That was, it got a good response. I mean, people yeah. hated him. So that, you know, that's good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I really thought that they, unfortunately, because then once again, there was another changing of the guard and then another changing of the guard and another head writer, another, and every time a new writer comes on, of course they want to create their own stuff. And so uh, that kind of, I thought they missed an opportunity there, especially with Jeffrey and Casty, And um, it never really, uh, amounted to anything. I knew that they had planned to put Cassie and Josh, which would have, and they eventually yeah. did. But originally with Laura, I think they were planning to do that. That would have been really interesting also. But anyway, uh, you know, it is what it is. And uh, we had a great time doing that. You really did. You really did. And all of the concerts. Yeah. Uh, so that and getting was... everybody to participate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, everyone was so great. And um, I actually, you know, it was so many people wanted to get their inner rock star out. <laughs> so they, they couldn't wait. They, that, I, 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 they loved doing it. I know Kim just was so wonderful uh, coming to do the Red Cross events you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and the concert. She did Tina. Didn't she do Tina one year? Tina Turner? Oh, yeah, she did. Uh, uh, Proud Mary. Song? Proud Mary. Oh, yeah. my God. Knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then we had the great Ron Rains came. Uh, I'll never forget that. Uh, so Ron, you know, who is a, uh, a legit voice, uh, a Broadway star, uh, agreed to come. And so oh, this is great. And he wanted to do uh, House of the Rising Sun. And I'm thinking, okay, this is great. And I'll never forget, we were, I think we just rehearsed it once. We hardly rehearsed these things. But I remember we, we were on stage, I believe. And so, uh, and I'm trying to, you know, because those guitars can get really loud and I'm trying to keep the band, you know, at a, at a certain level because we're in these small, you know, not in a huge venue. And I remember Ron in the middle of the song looking at me like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> and so, okay, you got it, pal. And we... We cranked it, and of course we blew the the doors off the place. And but we couldn't uh, overcome his voice. His voice, boom! So I'll never forget that. It was a magical moment with Ron singing "House of the Rising Sun." Yeah, I, so. I think for the fans to see all of you sing where where they you know don't on a daily basis on guiding Ryan. Yeah. Right. Well, look at it, the talent. I mean, Ron Rains is like a world-class voice and, and Kim and, uh, and everybody, they were just so, and we had Michael Parr come in another yeah. amazing voice. Mandy and Bruno, who has an Mandy, uh, God, I mean, it was just so much fun. And, and we had themes too. So unfortunately, oh, yeah, yeah. there will not be a theme uh, in <laughs> February, but we would do 60s, that was, probably the one of the most fun in the seventies. And we did all these themes and everyone would dress up as well. So it was just a blast. I love that you're doing it again for the red cross. That's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, I wanted to do it for charity. And so Elsa is, is very happy to do it too. So we're, we're not getting any money or anything like that. This is all for the, the red cross after we make our expenses and all the money is going to go to the red cross. Lo love that. Um, fans are asking, what was your experience like on General Hospital? Oh, gosh. Uh, so I had come out to, that was great. Uh, I had come out to Los Angeles. We moved the entire family out to Los Angeles because my mom's, uh, well, she's in Las Vegas area now, but but we wanted to be closer to my family. And and we, uh, we realized that Manhattan was probably not going to be <laughs> The place to raise the kids so and, and smart not knowing covid was coming oh this is long before COVID. right but, but still yeah, no, not you know <laughs> no, no. you don't want to be in a smaller apartment oh know? yeah you were talking about that to me earlier yeah it's, it's a, you don't know that's, that's very hard um but uh i'm i'm sure laura was probably laura wright was probably the the reason i was you know 
uh, cast over there as uh, Warren Bauer. Of course, this was, he was a bad guy, and um, uh, so we just had a little little bit of a run there. And and uh, but that was just so fun working with all those people. I remember meeting Anthony Geary and all these people that were like legends to me. Legends, and, yeah. Uh, did you get to work with Laura while you were? Very. We had a couple of scenes. Uh, my uh, scenes were mostly um, uh, with. Gosh, I can't remember the actress's name, but um, uh, you're you're catching me a little off guard here. Yeah, but, the fans um, might know. I. Uh... But anyway, I, I had to play uh, to challenge uh, Sonny uh, Maurice Bernard's uh, character. And I knew right then that I'm not going to last. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I don't think anybody challenging Sonny lasts long. <laughs> yeah, so I was really letting him have it too, uh, like you're a thug and blah blah blah. And uh, so uh, he he does something really. My character does something really despicable, and I think he starts shooting people in the hospital, as as him to recall. So uh, yeah, he was irredeemable after that. Well, fans, you know, we're writing. To I would like to come back as his brother who wants revenge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just putting that out there. Yeah. There you, <clears throat> there you go. Pe yeah. People definitely want to see you uh, you and Laura reunite on General Hospital for sure. Oh, well, that'd be great. Yeah. Do, do you have a favorite story from uh, your time at Guiding Light? Storyline? Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, we talked about them. I mean, the yeah. the... Every day was just such a, a plethora of stuff to do, <laughs> you know. I mean, soap opera, I had never done a, a soap like that before, where it's just, you know, this, we're doing what? <laughs> he, he's doing what to who? Okay. Uh, so it was just, but favorite, uh, obviously, you know, the stuff with Laura, uh, all of our scenes, I just, just, Loved doing all that stuff with her and with David. The, the fans fell in love with that. I mean, that you know, that's just pure romance at its best. It really know? was. It really yeah. was. You know, I mean, literally a prince charming, uh, right? And uh, and his princess. Uh, you know, yeah. It's a I, Cinderella story, and it was just you can't go wrong. And you know what? I have to say, <clears throat> who is it? The Jim and Barbara. Jim yeah. Brown and Barbara Essenston, I want to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good, they good were call. the writers <laughs> that that created that. And I remember, now don't forget, I had been doing a daily sitcom and some other kind of stuff. But I remember thinking, this is really good writing. Uh, <laughs> and they, so not only was the story well conceived, but, you know, in the beginning, that's the way these things work, right? Then they have to kind of come up with stuff. But in the beginning, I remember how uh, thinking this is really good, and and then the dialogue also. Uh, although I did maybe adjust some of the dialogue sometimes. I'm, <laughs> I'm not I'm sure the uh, writers appreciated that, but uh, I think everybody did. You know, a little. Like <clears throat> but you know, I'm I'm no I, I don't like to do that, and uh, I think the challenge is really trying to make it work, and that there's a there's a sort of satisfaction in in, in doing that, but. Uh, I couldn't help myself, uh, so I, I did that a few times. But uh, yeah, I, I just thought that that writing was great, and so obviously that, and then the very beginning of Jeffrey, because the introduction of the character was such a, a shock, and I remember working with Frank Dacopoulos, and you know he's looking at me like, wait a minute, who is this guy? You look exactly <laughs> like so and so, and so I had so much fun with Frank and and with everybody uh, doing that character. That yeah, was a lot of fun. Crazy. Oh, and Gina, Gina. Oh my gosh, yeah. That the introduction of uh, of Gina's character, Dinah, Dinah, yeah. and uh, we we had these great scenes because Jeffrey was sort of hit her, uh, you know, puppet master in the beginning. You know, bringing her and integrating her as a spy and all this. And oh my gosh, Gina Tognoni, what a what a fantastic uh, energy yeah. and actress she is. And I just really loved working with her too. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my see, gosh. We haven't changed see. a bit, have we? <laughs> no. Nope. Trying to see what year that is. It's oh, crazy. God. Look at that. Look at look at us. And look at uh, 
Paul and Nancy. Paul and Nancy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Geo. <laughs> A lot of memories. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you guys were on the cover a lot. Yeah, we 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 were popular on the covers of these magazines and all of that. So that really helped us a lot too. Gave us a lot of exposure. Thanks for putting the SohoPlayhouse.com up there. You so please, welcome. if the tickets aren't up for sale yet, they will be. I mean, I I put all the stuff in there. Uh, this morning, so they should be up any time now. So please oh, go that's to the right. Playhouse and go and get those tickets. They're reasonably priced uh, for this type of show, and there will be a chance for you if you wanted to make a donation to the Red Cross. You can too when you're there. But please go to the Soho Playhouse. The tickets will go fast. There's there's less than 200 in that theater. So please, uh, yeah, get those seats. I, I love that. I love that. What else? Uh... Do you plan for 2023? Uh, 2023, uh, we're going to be, well, the main thing we're doing is these, because when we do these um, uh, concerts, uh, the producers love to uh, shoot the show at the same time. So we're really just going crazy shooting the show. Uh, and, and so we'll be doing that in Nashville. We'll be doing that in New York. And um, I'm not sure what the plans are uh, as for that show, but I, I'm recurring. So hopefully I'll get to go over back to Paris again and, and do some of that. Uh, do you get to take the kids to Paris? Have they experienced Paris yet? Not yet, but I intend to do that. And I'm hoping that it all works out. Uh, you know, my, my son, Sean, is, uh, is on the baseball team at his high school. And, you know, it's not like when, when I went to school. Oh, they're, everybody's they, busier than. They literally play every day or, or they they have to do something every day around the, the, the whole year. It's, it's, it's really. Yeah. Crazy. The activities kids have today. I, it yeah. wears me out just thinking about it. <laughs> so I love, I, I sort of follow him around and. Uh, and yeah. I was uh, just going to ask you, what is it like watching your own son play baseball? Well, once again, now uh, people accuse me of like directing him into baseball. <laughs> and, uh, and they, oh, of course you didn't, Brad. Right. Sure you didn't. But he really is passionate about that sport. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's just it's thrilling to watch. Uh, and he had a game this summer where I think he struck out 11 batters. I, I mean, I don't think I ever struck out 11 batters. And so I was just like, wow, okay, so maybe he can do this. And, are, and, are you yeah. allowed, Dad, from the sidelines? I try not to be. That's really obnoxious. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I can't help myself. But, I mean, I never argue with the umpire yeah, or anything like that. Good. But I'm more like cheering on Sean. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. Your, your daughter's in music. He's playing baseball. Yeah. So I'm just – and, and, and they're both going to act. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just, you know, being a parent and for all the parents out there, oh my gosh, we don't know what we're really getting into. And uh, there's so many great rewards, but uh, there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of responsibility. And uh, uh, so, and it never gets easier. <laughs> you think, okay, well, once we get through this stage, then no, 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 it just keeps going. So. Yeah. Talk, talk about fatherhood. How, how did it change your life? Oh, you turned it upside down completely. Changed me completely as a person. Uh, you know, you, your stuff goes on the back burner. And in a way, I, I kind of didn't mind that. I kind of embraced that. It was like, OK, uh, you're a father and you want to do the best you can. It's really, really not easy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but it really changes you, and I I think for the better, and I hope so. I, I, it's made me uh, see, th you know, and you also get to live, relive your life, you know, through their experiences. You you recall, oh my gosh, yeah, this is what I was doing when I was that age, and and so it's just a, an amazing experience. I love it. Well, I, I think the fact um, that they may not want to want you around now, they are going to look back and realize that you were there for sure. All of yeah. From your mouth to God's ear. <laughs> down, I, I don't, I'm not sure about that right now. 
Bradley, it is so good to see you. I'm you gonna too. check my calendar and if I can make the 18th in New York. Please come. So call I, me and I'll so I can uh, grab you a seat. I, I, okay. will, I will uh definitely let you know. It would be amazing. The fans were really thrilled to see you today. They they were well, looking forward thank to you to all. Let me please say that, uh, because we haven't done that. Thank you to everybody. Uh, for your support and uh, for uh, following me. I'm on Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff, which is, don't even get me started because I'm, I, I don't understand all that stuff yet. But thank you, thank you, thank you for all your uh, support and for keeping me in mind. I uh, love you guys. Hey, 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 bonsoir tout le monde en France. Merci beaucoup. Je vous adore. Et à bientôt sur uh, les mystères de l'amour. J'espère. That. Perfection, Bradley. You stay well, my friend. Thank you, Alan. Talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in today. Thank you, Bradley Cole. Join us tomorrow when director Fado Xavier joins me live. Fado is celebrating 25 years directing some of your favorite daytime dramas, where he started at Guiding Light as an intern and is now directing at General Hospital. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. Turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. And don't forget, you can stream uh, audio versions of the shows on your favorite streaming platforms. Just search The Locker Room. Have a great evening, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow afternoon.